villainous G.I. Joe villain Crocmaster was not around a whole lot, and for only a couple years. He was in just a few issues of G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, and he wasn't on the animated series. He's only been a part of a few of the action figure waves as well, but despite that, he's immensely popular and has been requested a lot on this channel. So let's talk about Crocmaster. But before we do, let me say thank you for watching the channel, whether it's your first time here or you're back for more. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the content I upload just like this every week. Let's jump into the story. So because information on Crocmaster is limited, as his various file cards give us pretty much the same data, and his appearances are just a few, I'm going to pull from a variety of f sources so we can build his backstory. To start, we go to Brazil and the Estrella figure for Crocmaster, and couple that with the seventh issue of the Christos Gage written IDW G. G.I. Joe Cobra series, along with, of course, his file cards, and we have a look at his early years. There we learn Crocmaster grew up in the swampy marshlands of the Florida Everglades to an abusive alligator farming father. His dad called himself Crocmaster to set himself apart from the million other alligator farmers in South Florida. It was, as he said, about branding. He was alone with his father during those early years, as it's presumed his dad actually killed his mom. While Crocmaster was a child, he trained little geckos, and he'd use them to scare people by doing things like frightening the girls at school or hide the geckos in birthday cakes. And when his mother, quote-unquote, disappeared, his father kept him around on the farm, using him as slave labor instead of sending him off to school. He thought about running away, but he loved his crocs and gators too much, he couldn't leave them. As he grew up, he graduated to larger reptiles on the family farm and to caring for the creatures. One day, his pet crocodile was killed and skinned by his dad. Its hide sold for $2,000 to a businessman from Europe. So, young Crocmaster pushed his own dad into the swamp and freed the farm's hungry alligators to eat him alive. He then took on his father's name, Crocmaster, and started off as a go-between for narcotic smugglers. This is when he first realized the defensive capabilities of his pets. Crocmaster took his smuggling money, it was lucrative for him, and reinvested it as he himself evolved into a misanthropic eco-terrorist, fiercely protective of his Everglades. He hunted poachers, hunters, developers, and anyone encroaching on his sacred lands. He became Lord of the Reptiles and developed a niche career as an alligator wrestler on the side. And later on, he tried to transfer his knowledge and relationship with the reptiles, those defensive capabilities he realized, into a viable business model by attempting to actually sell alligators as home security through his company, Guard Gators Incorporated. Yes, Crocmaster from Guard Gators, he's a handler of both crocodiles and alligators. And those accessories he came with, those are alligators. Crocmaster decided to put an advertisement in a newspaper, and the Baroness one day was reading the paper and came across his article, responded to the ad, and hired him to develop a system of canals and waterworks on Cobra Island, and to put all his, as his file card describes them, ravenously hungry man-eating crocodiles in there as a defensive layer. It was a natural fit, Cobra and Croc, to parts of the Reptilia scientific class of animal species working together. Crocmaster has a special connection with his creatures, and he gives them names like Lolita, Tiffany, Melissa, there's a whole bunch of them. He trained his girls, as he likes to call them, to specifically attack G.I. Joes by using life-size mannequins in his training sessions. One day on Cobra Island, Crocmaster was patrolling and actually found evidence that someone was on the island who shouldn't be there. Someone was hiding and using small fires to cook food, and it turns out that it was Captain Min who'd been stranded after Fred Seven left him for dead after his fishing boat blew up in issue 64. Crocmaster actually said to Brunhild and Crimehild, his two pets with him at the time, that as long as he keeps to himself, it doesn't bother him. But he said he wouldn't be able to report it as the Cobra honchos would think he wasn't doing his job. In the next issue, Crocmaster was with Dr. Mindbender and Serpentor in the landlocked freighter, the Arbco Star, as civil war broke out on the island, which is interesting because the Baroness is the one who initially hired him, and the Baroness was on the side of Cobra Commander during civil war. He was then a featured part of G.I. Joe Yearbook No. 4. In fact, he was on the cover, angrily pointing at the October Guard, while Horror Show looks like he's going to toss Cobra Commander at him. In the issue, the October Guard were attempting to sneak on to Cobra Island to capture Cobra Commander from the Soviet Union. Some of the Joes were able to stop Shrage and Stormovic, but Horror Show, Dinah, and their leader, Colonel Brekhoff, made landfall, with both Torpedo and Wetsuit in pursuit. Then we see Crocmaster laying in the swampy water, just his head above the water, when he detects disturbing ripples interrupting his nap. I wish I could sleep on the job like he does. But he gets up, calls a scaled squad, and they go hunting, quickly finding the October Guard. And one of them bites Horror Show, who yells to Colonel Brekhoff that he'd been bitten by a shark! He had to be corrected and say, nope, it was not a shark. As Crocmaster watched from the reeds, the October Guard are overrun with crocs and gators. 
They ran to some dry ground while Horror Show tossed a handful of grenades at Crocmaster's pets, and the gators all blew up, which enraged Crocmaster. Oh, you shouldn't have done that, he said. October Guard watched from the shrubs as Baroness passed by on a hiss tank. Crocmaster was sneaking up behind them, but then G.I. Joe's wetsuit and torpedo were then sneaking up on him at the same time. Everyone's sneaking up on everyone. Crocmaster sent a croc after the two Joes behind him, because he realized they were there, and so Torpedo ended up wrestling and fighting with the giant creature. He won, though, by propping its mouth open with a rifle and tossing a thermite grenade down its throat. As Wetsuit spied the October Guard, Crocmaster snuck up on him, but the Torpedo showed up and smacked his head with a rifle, knocking Crocmaster out cold. I guess... He was able to go back to his nap. And we learned in the G.I. Joe annual from 1992 that Crocmaster was hired by Destro, girlfriend of the Baroness who hired him for Cobra, to guard the sewer system beneath a Mars building. The G.I. Joe's Jinx penetrated the building via the sewers, but she ran into Crocmaster and his two alligators, although she was quickly able to defeat them. Later, Raptor met up with Billy Kessler in San Francisco and told him that he knows who killed his father, Cobra Commander. And not only that, but he knows where the body was buried. So they linked up with Hardmaster, which is really Zartan in disguise, and Tyrone, and decided to take out this imposter. So they made it to Cobra Island and linked up with Captain Min, still stranded there. Zartan and Raptor infiltrated Cobra Commander's party, while Min, Billy, and Tyrone hid in the dunes outside as night washed over the island. It was then that they ran into a Night Viper patrol. They evaded one patrol, but the Night Vipers blew up Min's boat, and so the group had to head into the storm drains nearby, and that's when they ran into Crocmaster and his trio of pets. This time, he was with Chelsea, Tara, and Melissa. Crocmaster brought the group to Cobra Commander, but this was the imposter Cobra Commander and also happened to be right at the time when the real Cobra Commander showed up. And the real Cobra Commander threw Dr. Mindbender and wrapped her right down into the hold of the freighter with the fake Cobra Commander, Crocmaster, Billy, Firefly, Voltar, and Zartan. And then he slammed the door shut and from his helicopter, Cobra Commander ordered the detonation of the preset charges around the freighter, which created a channel that filled with seawater, and that flowing water pushed the freighter towards the volcano, where then the volcano was blown up and collapsed down upon the freighter. So Crocmaster and everyone inside was left to die, although a couple did manage to make it out later on, but not Crocmaster. And this is when he, well, the original in any case, meets his final fate. So if you think about it, it actually presents an interesting problem for Cobra Commander, because he now has to deal with all these canals and tunnels on his island, which are filled with these vicious crocodiles and alligators, and no one around to tame them. But that problem will be addressed in the future. In 2005, when the Wave 7 Valor vs. Venom Croc Master came out, we had a massive revelation that answered that question. It says, quote, After the original Croc Master perished in the freighter during Cobra Civil War, a succession of new individuals have assumed the mantle. It's not easy to maintain a grip on the position with hungry Crocs on one side and, and power-hungry trainees on the other, both waiting for the first opportunity to turn on their master, unquote. In the 21st issue of Devil's Zoo's America's Elite series, a new croc master is leading a team of jungle vipers hunting down Wraith and the Baroness. They made it to the burning wreckage of the plane as the Baroness jumped out of the tree and gunned this croc master down. Between Wraith and the Baroness croc and the jungle vipers were taken out easy. In 2010's G.I. Joe Cobra 2 series, the first issue, another croc master showed up, and this one was lanky and somehow even creepier than those who took the name before. Erica La Ten who'd later become Chameleon, but now an adjunct at Extensive Enterprises, met Crocmaster as he was partially submerged in sewer water with his pet Siamese and freshwater crocodiles around him eating body parts. In the third issue, he shot Erica with a harpoon as she tried to escape, but her body armor protected her, and she emptied her entire clip into Crocmaster, although he survived and was subsequently sent to Ecuador by the Baroness. And so in G.I. Joe Cobra Volume 2, Issue 2 from the summer of 2011, he fought with a team of G.I. Joes, and between himself and his pets, he says he killed five of them. Then in 2013, another Crocmaster helped take over a town in Ohio along with Baroness, Firefly, some worms, and Darklawn, who was accompanied by his cousin's Iron Grenadiers. Crocmaster walked right into the mayor's office in that town and his pets feasted. There's a funny scene in Aubrey Sitterson's Scarlet Strike Force where the Raptor and another Crocmaster who were debating whether dinosaurs looked like Crocmaster's pet Celeste or if they actually had feathers. And that's it for his comic book appearances. In 1987, Crocmaster's first action figure debuted. He was advertised that year in this flyer, which also featured the Buzzbore, Pogo, and Cobra Jetpack. He was on another flyer riding on the side of an Ice Viper piloted Cobra Wolf. But crocodiles are cold-blooded. They don't do well in an environment where skis are needed, so I'm not sure how useful he'd be wherever that wolf was going. Milton Bradley had been putting out G.I. Joe puzzles since 1985. 
Sometimes they would actually make four separate puzzles that when put together made a larger picture. Crockmaster was on the solo puzzle in 87 fighting Chuckles and in 88 part of the mural puzzle where he was fighting Spearhead in front of a rolling thunder. We wouldn't have a second one until 2005 when he became part of the Valor vs Venom line and this version came in a two pack with Bomb Strike. This is the second Crockmaster and came with a green mask and a bald head instead of a black Bane like helmet of the previous version. He was back to his more traditional look for the 2008 release and this figure if you look at his arm shows a bite mark. One of his pets bit him at some point. The next year, 2009, a Terra Viper was released for the ROC line, which was basically a repainted Crocmaster with Serpentor's extremities. And then in 2011, Crocmaster was included as part of the Pursuit of Cobra line. And now we had snakes and a crocodile along with a training whip, a chain leash, and two firearms, and a bit more of a yellow hue than the previous version. He was advertised in 2011 along with Blowtorch as being part of the Python Patrol in the Pursuit of Cobra line, but as the line wound down, those were cancelled. When the cancellation came, an increase in fan demand, so Hasbro chose to release the figures together in the Swamp Steam pack for the 50th anniversary. For that, Crocmaster was switched, opting for the red pythonized outfit now, though not officially part of Python Patrol, and hell, even his gator was now red for some reason. His file card remains largely the same through all of these different versions, although the 2015 one does tell us that his Cobra Island waterway system suffered a setback when Blowtorch which was the other figure in the pack, attempted to cut a dry channel directly through the island to bypass all the ravenous crocodiles. Because of his debut in 1987 and subsequent appearance in ARAH in the summer of 88, Crocmaster actually never made it into the Sunbow cartoon series, which ended in 86. In fact, the only time that Crocmaster was animated was for the TV commercials relating to the toys and action figures. For example, he was a 1987's commercial that included the Cobra Maggot and the G.I. Joe Persuader. And being that this character is so popular, it will be interesting to see if Hasbro or IDW decide to do anything more with him in the future. If they do, we'll be sure to talk all about it here on the channel. But for now, that's a wrap on the story, my friends. The story of Crocmaster. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.